isn't about tips and tricks, just as you're saying. It's about being seen. It's having other human beings see me, which puts me on the spot. Am I okay to be seen? Can I be out in the world or should I just hide in a cave, in a closet, in my home and never come out? That's safe. But it actually trains me to be safe when people are looking at me on a stage in a ballroom with hundreds of people. And that is something that's in the body. That's emotion. And that comes from doing it and retraining and retraining. And I'd say rewriting the programming of past, especially in my case, specific traumas in grade school or around the Thanksgiving table or wherever it was that I learned, do not do this public speaking thing. It will not go well. It will be painful and bad and embarrassing and humiliating. And I should stay away from it. So it undoes that training. It overlays a new set of training, which is this can be, well, not just heal that, but it can be a rewarding experience, a positive experience where I, you know, we're always looking out at the world, looking to have them accept us so that we accept us. So if that isn't an inside job, starting from out there in the world to then feel better about myself, so I feel better about myself without being out in the world, I don't know what is an inside job. Yeah. Follow that? Yeah. I guess the bigger picture is uh, human beings are learning to trust each other and build community. You know, we've, as an aside, wondered if there's a way to use speaking circles and the dynamic that's built up and the trust uh, that's built up in our groups to talk about politics, which is so divisive these days in the modern era. And I don't know that we've solved that and said, here's the format for it, but we do build community in circles. So I'm, I'm asked to listen and I, probably almost always see myself in the speaker. And we come in all shapes and sizes and different voices and different mannerisms and different traits, but it's always the, you know, the shyness or the fear or the overcoming the fear. And I have such compassion for the speaker. So, I mean, the first thing I'd say is also, is anybody coming to speaking circles is gonna feel more compassion than they've ever felt in that situation before. And we're all working it together and we each get our turn. So we each wanna support the other so that we in turn are supported. Not to mention that just the feeling of community and camaraderie, where I'm supporting another human being in their growth and in acceptance and ultimately love is a very rewarding uh, feeling and to be part of that. We don't give constructive criticism in speaking circles. And some people say, well, how can I learn if nobody's telling me what I'm doing wrong? How's that? What's that? What's your answer? Um, I certainly understand that question because I came from you know, a New York City culture of criticism where you know, no higher station in life can be a film critic or a theater critic or a drama critic or an anything critic. Critics are great because they help shape and form and inform, you know, yeah, that's not false, but it's also crippling if you're already suffering from a trauma. And there's something called positive reinforcement rather than negative reinforcement, which uh, psychologists have proven is actually a more effective way to teach people. So initially, anyway, for someone coming to a speaking circle saying, I want to work this skill and i very uncomfortable public speaking, positive reinforcement, positive reinforcement is the way to go. And that's from not just conceptually, but also my experience with speaking circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know the criticism. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, other than I guess at some point someone could say, hey, Jack, you can slow down. But I figured that out on my own just watching the videos like my God, do I speak quickly when I get going? It's incredible how fast I go. I don't need to go that fast. Just take a breath. So I think you create a very safe space with your design of speaking circles where it's positive reinforcement. That's why the positive regard, which we're not used to, versus more of the same, which is criticism, constructive or otherwise. What have you gotten from watching your videos? I mean, over the years, after I watch the speaking circles and I look at the tape, well, I, as I said before, I, I get to like that guy. I get to like that guy. I mean, because it's me, but it's not me. It's, it's, it's actually not me. I'm not in a little box on a screen, two-dimensional. It's a representation of me, but I get to like that media image of me because that's what most of us put out to the world these days, unless you find yourself in a situation standing on stage. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's self-acceptance. It's he, not liking, getting to like the sound of my voice or, and in my case, it's easy. I'm told I have a radio voice or whatever, so it's easier for me. But there's other things I may not like about myself. And just to sort of make some peace with that guy, with me. I mean, if that's not healing the world, my friend, I don't know what is. 
I mean, who cares whether you ever go speak in public, but just to accept yourself. So you're, you know, a, <laughs> a happier, gentler person sending waves of happier, gentler out into the world as we go about our business. I can keep getting better. It's practice. And you and I have had discussions many times about now that I'm kind of past the, I don't want to get up on stage. No, no, I do want to get up on stage. I'm to that stage now. How much of my material do I want to memorize and deliver like an actor does? They make it fresh and real if they're a fine actor. It's actually real emotion, but they know what lines they're going to say. And then how much, no, no, just trust that I know my material inside and out, which in my case is a forest advocate environmental activist I do, and just that it's, it's fine. And in the moment, I'll actually come up with things spontaneously like an um, improv comic does that are going to be better than if they're rehearsed and canned and staged and just regurgitated. So that's actually kind of where I am now, like how much of that? I, I don't know. It's kind of an open question and I'm working it depending on the situation, the talk, the audience. So it's ongoing. But the more I, I, I want to say this. I'm still absolutely on a learning curve. And uh, I guess also with additional coaching from you, I've learned I don't have to hide behind my, my photographs, my artwork, material, and actually I can be wh who they come to hear, an audience. And that's still, that's, that's kind of my edge. Because, well, you know, <laughs> listen to this voice. This just pops to the fore. Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? You're not that guy. Well. Who says? Where does that voice come from? You know, inner critic again. Old, old programming from New York. Who the f do you think you are, buddy, to get up on stage and do that? Eh? Who do you think you are? Well, you know, George Carlin, are you? It's like, no, I'm not. I'm actually Jack, and I'm creating this as I go on the fly, creating my own, you know, onstage persona. Or is it not a persona? Is it actually me? Hmm. <sighs> I guess I would answer the how to be a better facilitator question the same way I would, I've learned, not necessarily from so much experience, but how to be a better teacher, how to be a better therapist, how to be better in the world at whatever profession, business leader. It's, um, I would say, compassion. More of our own self-work to become more compassionate on ourselves and therefore more compassionate just energetically. It's a sense. I mean, the, the woo-woo word is vibration, which is a fine word also. The New Yorker me has criticism of that, I notice. But it is ultimately um, something I've, well, back to you know the, grand, the proverbial grandmother or grandfather who you felt comfortable with, they didn't necessarily say something, they just felt safe with you. So I think that comes from somebody becoming comfortable in his or her own skin. So whether you're listening to somebody talk or you're talking to the group as a facilitator, the more comfortable you can get in that position. They feel, the audience, the, the students, the People feel your comfort and they're relaxed. So, you know, how do you get there? What are the techniques or tricks? I, I don't know that there are techniques or tricks. They actually have to be in, be in that state of being. And it, uh, Ram Das, you know who that is, Richard Albert mm -hmm. quote comes to mind. He said, the greatest gift I can give another human being is my own state of being. What the heck does that mean? And I've come to believe it and I was trying to put words to it. I know some people have said, you know, when they're sitting at home alone, they're, you know, not necessarily at peace, but when they're facilitating, then they actually feel more calm and comfortable connected because their energy is focused on another person. Well, to which I say, fantastic. You know, I mean, ultimately, <laughs> your work as a facilitator is also absolutely while you're facilitating. So if that's the space where you're drawn out of your own head and your own tapes running and you're feeling really compassionate or your attention is off yourself on another person to support them, if that works for you. Fantastic, you know, and then and then <laughs> love yourself when you're back home feeling like a regular human being with all sorts of stories running in your head. I mean, that's why I say it. this is the journey of self-acceptance. Ultimately, it's not getting rid of the tapes or getting rid of the criticism in the head, the tapes that are running that we've learned. It's, oh, there's a tape playing again. Oh, critic again. I, I did one course years ago where the, the facilitator, it wasn't a speaking circles, said most of us most of the time, spend most of our time doing this. 
just gently or not so gently hitting ourselves, criticizing ourselves, and just to become aware, like, oh my God, I was going to hit myself again. You don't stop the hitting, you just notice the hitting, and then why would I hit myself now that I know better? So it's just constantly noticing, and that's, you know, it's like a Buddhist philosophy of learning something new. As a facilitator, let me ask you, Lee, how much of it is me doing great facilitating versus just getting out of the way of this human being in front who's got the courage to stand up in front of a room of people and just not face a wall of criticism for the first time or the 20th time of a neutral, calm, patient, attentive audience just to be listened to and then not have judgment heaped on it. I mean, that alone is a healing modality. It's so simple. Yes, my mastery as a facilitator is precisely one and only one thing, getting out of the way. Nobody in the room is in the way. I make sure as facilitator, nobody else gets in the way and I stay out of the way. So it's actually coming down to being nothing intentionally and holding a space. Usually I'm full of beans, but now I'm full of quotes. What you just said about getting out of the way reminds me of a wonderful, it was so helpful for me, about the time I came to you at age 42, I'm now 58. And it was, I, I mean, as I, I'm gonna set this up by saying, if I had heard this when I was in my 20s or 30s in New York, I would just like, <laughs> can I do that motion? Um, I wanna be polite here for your video, but I just would have thought, what a crock of hooey. And now I think it's the most profound thing. And I, I thought that at 42 when I heard this, when I was ready to hear it, as they say, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So Lao Tzu said, sitting quietly, doing nothing, the spring comes and the grass grows. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Lao Tzu. Jack, who could remember a few lines and pass them on, thinking that they have value for some people. So, you know, you set up a facilitation because you're a facilitator and you're going to do facilitating really well in the room. Just, you know, relax. Oh, look at my ego. Look at that. Or if you're terrified, oh, I'm not going to do well. Oh, notice that. And then go ahead and continue on with your facilitation and allow the person to shine and come forth because God knows we all want to if we're, <laughs> if we're not too terrified to try. Ha, ha, ha.